right. So you've been watching my show. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're amazing. You right there. Awesome. Appreciate it. New people. Appreciate y'all. But I'm going to tell y'all just a recap of this year's. Matter of fact, let's take it back to NCAA. So I'm talking about Caitlin Clark. I'm sorry for the E. I'm sorry. I'm, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I'm going to change that like literally right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was wrong with me. I apologize. E is gone. We're back. We're back. I'm sorry. E is gone. So Caitlin Clark, because she deserved that. And I'll talk about that in a second. But here's the deal, Banana Peel. We started this off this year. Two big time stars, names, two big names, right? We started with two big names. And it started in some folks junior year of college, right? So we had Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. Go back and watch some of the my other stuff, uh, other my other shows about Caitlin Clark and all that stuff. And that'll lead you to where I'm, it, that'll give you some insight onto where I was and where I am and, and, and what I'm about to say, right? So I came into this thing like, okay, now you're rookies. They, they had a great college rivalry in junior, senior year. It was great. It was awesome. I and mean, we had a great time watching the tournament. Uh, they, they drew a crowd. We were all watching everybody saying this is the most anybody's tuned into, you know, uh, women's basketball, college basketball, all that type of, like that. That's the most I, I'm here for it. I was here for, it. I was there for it. I watched it. I enjoy watching Iowa versus LSU. I've seen a couple of Maryland games too. Just, you know, just want to throw that out there. You know, I'm gonna watch it all, but Blossomed into them going to the WNBA. So they go to the NBA. They go to the NBA, WNBA. I'm sorry. I apologize. The W. They go to the W. And first round picks, obviously. Two big stars. Boom. It's going down. What's going to happen? Who's going to be the rookie of the year? You know, we, you have your favorites. We say a lot of people say Kaylin Clark, who got was the number one pick. Now, that's that's a big that's a big deal. And, and keep that in the back of your mind as we listen to this. Caitlin Clark, she was picked number one overall. Who gets the number one overall pick most of the time? Something to think about why I go on my little monologue here. But Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, they get drafted. So Caitlin Clark goes to the Indiana Fever out of Indianapolis. And Angel Reese goes to Chicago. This shy. We love both of those places. So let's talk about the season. So again, there's been a whole bunch of controversy in regards to who should be rookie of the year. And we would see that Angel Reese is a dominant rebounder. We would see that Caitlin Clark, and yeah, early on, very, very turnover prone. And I'm not to say that that's not the case right now either. Uh, you might have a couple of turnovers on you now. But we came in talking about who should get rookie of the year. That's what we started talking about. Well, we watched the season go by. We watched. Kaitlyn Clark start off her season one and eight. We saw Angel Reese doing her thing. We saw that. When we were talking about rookie of the year, that's what we was trying to figure out. We we're trying to figure out what is who is the rookie of the year? Who's the rookie of the year? Who, who should be it? It should be Angel Reese or should it be Kaylin Clark? Um, we're past that. We're past that conversation, I think. I think we're past that conversation. I think we need to talk about some different things, if you don't mind. Let's let me define MVP because I think that people have a lot of problems with defining what an MVP is. And I'm going to tell you why. And I finally understand it because of what's happened between these two young ladies. The MVP is the most valuable player, right? In regards to, in my opinion, circumstance. So let's, you got to look at the layout of the league of the WNBA. You got to look at let's look at the the layout of anything that you're doing. The most valuable player. That can go into like your job or anything like that. Who's the most valuable player based on the landscape that you're looking at? Now, let's look at mid 2000s NBA. The Western Conference was stacked 
And there were several people that could be MVPs. There were some on the there's some on the east side, on the east too, Eastern Conference. There were some. But the West was like stacked. Like these are people with 50 plus wins that was fighting to still be in the playoffs. So the landscape at that time, right, was everybody good over here. Everybody's good over here. So we can at least narrow it down from there. Don't even worry about the East. Understand that the West has, everybody has the best record. Everybody scored, everybody has more than 48 wins, 50 wins. It's a dog fight. A couple have 60 wins. Some have 58. But you get what I'm saying? So the conversation is, who's the MVP? Who's the most valuable player in the best part of the NBA? You had your Phoenix Suns out there. You had, I mean, there's going to be a lot of controversy, but there's, you know, uh, Nash won. I'm going to call him Kevin so bad, but Steve Nash. You had Kobe in the, in the conversation. We've had Shaq in the conversation. We have we have all the lots. Get Tim Duncan in the conversation. Amari Stoudemire. There was a lot of good players in the West. I mean, uh, 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 Chris Webber. There, so it was who did the most to make sure that their team continued to win in a very hard conference. So that was who was to make the most valuable player during that time. There's also another way. It, again, it, it depends on the whole landscape of everything. You got to look at everything. And then that's how you depict who is the most valuable player. So when we look at the WNBA, yes, we have our stars like Asia and uh, Ionescu out there in New York. Plenty of stars in the WNBA. I, mean, I get it. And so it's it's a whole bunch of the people that we do know. Yes, we know that you're going to put up 20 and 25. Shout out to Gotti. What's up, my boy? We know that. You're going to get that out of them. We know Asia is going to put up her points. She's going to put up her numbers. Is she the most valuable player? That remains to be seen on this particular point. We don't know how much worse her team is without her. We don't. I don't know. The Aces are a pretty good team. We don't know how much worse they would be without her, without her putting in her. We don't know. But I do know this. I know that the Indiana Fever, they got the first pick of the draft. Who gets the first pick of the draft typically? The worst team. Team was terrible. So they got the first pick in the draft. No offense to my Fever, homie. I, lo I love y'all ladies. I love y'all. But that product last year wasn't – they got to make the playoffs at all. And then you draft Caitlin Clark. And guess what? She started off 1-8 and eight record, the fever, 1-8. and eight. She had a whole bunch of dazzling games. There was controversy about – uh, her getting pushed around and all that type of stuff. Yeah, I get it. I was there. I saw it. I watched it. I watched it every day. And there was a particular time, Angel Reese, balling out in regards to double-doubles, 2020, all that type of stuff. She's done that. Okay, we got us a rookie of the year race. Things changed since then. So the Fever, Indiana Fever started off 1-8. and eight. They are now 18-16. and 16. Okay. So they won 17 more games. Yeah, they lost eight, but they won. So they're 17 and eight, right? They've won five straight. And that's on top of some historical things, such as a rookie, Caitlin Clark, getting a triple double. Not just one, but she got two. So when she got one, that broke the record. All these people that have come through since in the WNBA since like what 96, 97, since they was on like oxygen. Now it's like a big brand, like, but since then, 
all the people that have come through ever since then, almost 20 years. Nobody's done it once. She did it twice. Cute. Got it. Scorer. Assists are there. Eight and two in her last 10 games. They're in a four-way tie for third. So we had to if we had to give them a position right now in the WNBA, the first position you would say is it's a lock. They're going to the playoffs this year. They were the worst team in the league. They got the number one first, they got the number one pick in the draft. But not only are they in sixth place, though, but they're in third place, actually, because they're in a four-way tie. So they really, honestly, are third place in the East in the WNBA. And this is all on the heels of being the, not rookie, of the month. Eastern Conference player of the it's a whole bunch of teams. You got, you got a lot of teams over there in the East, right? Even the Chicago Sky, who are, we'll talk about that in a second. But she's Eastern, Eastern Conference Player of the Month, not Rookie of the Month, Eastern Conference Player of the Month. It's a big deal. Now let's go ahead and backtrack and let's let's go up to Illinois. Let's go to Chicago. Let's go. Let's talk, man. I, I, we love the Bayou Barbie. We love her. We love Reese. I'm a Reese piece myself. I'm I'm part of Reese pieces. I get it. The double double machine. But man, she got it's it's two things. I'm not trying to talk bad about nobody. I'm just talking about what what let's be realistic for a second about what is the most valuable player because now we're not talking about rookie of the year anymore. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because we got somebody that's in the MVP conversation for these reasons, and it is what it is. Um, and we're not about to do all that's like oh, oh, she's untouchable now, all that type of stuff. No, I'm not I'm not going there. Like, leave the race stuff alone. Y'all kept that in college. That was fine. That was that was fun. We did the whole races, you know, who, who, who going for, who who gonna win the um who gonna win the race wars tonight? We did that. Iowa versus LSU. We did that. That was fun. Okay, now now it's here, all right. And we just talking basketball. What Angel Reese has done. From a rebounding standpoint and all that, oh, that's excellent. That's dope. We've not seen it before. Why? Because we've never seen it before. She broke records as a rookie. And she's breaking it. She's breaking records that rookies not even have to do with rookies. This is history of the WNBA. She's breaking those she's breaking those records, right? But the problem is this. Uh, three for 12, and you right there. It ain't like you shooting shooting threes. That's all right. I'm I'm not I'm not, I'm telling you I'm not picking on. It. I'm just talking as just a guy who's just watching basketball. But you can't be three for twelve when you're the big person, right? You at the goal. You can't be shooting twenty eight percent, and you at the rim. The rebounds, I'm going to tell you about the rebounds. The rebounds are straight up tenacity and effort and all that. I'm going to give her all that. That's that's it. Angel Reese is it. I, I love it. And she's going to have a great career. I just think, you know, as much as Gilbert don't like it, maybe she do want to hang out with Kareem a little bit and work on something. Make, finish. We just want her to finish. Just finish at the rim because you're right there. But, in, but rebounds are effort, 100%. And that's what kept them close at first. But there's another thing. That kind of hurts Angel. Not it doesn't kind of. This is what hurts Angel Reese's case is because her team they last in the standings. They lost the last seven games. They still can push for the playoffs, but like, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think. Listen, the record's not good. In Chicago, and I, I, I actually I, I studied and read up on some of this stuff. 
uh, coming from some some fans in Chicago and Twitter and everything. I mean, ain't nobody calling it that. Twitter and a lot of them, they're saying that Chicago made a whole bunch of trades to enhance their future. So they didn't get like first round picks and all that type of stuff. They did a lot of stuff, but they got rid of some of their scores, which apparently has been hurting them. So again, I love the rivalry between Angel Reese and Kaylin Clark. That's dope. I love it. That was great for the game. It did a lot for the game. Their presence, their presence, not just Caitlin. Now, if Caitlin was balling like this by herself without the story of Angel Reese, you know, that rivalry, that thing on there, I don't think it would be as that big a story, but it's big. But but what they did in college, and then for them to both be excelling at the WNBA level, it has done wonders for everyone. Myself, heck, I got a couple of more views off of this, off of, off of talking about that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Like and subscribe. But at the same time, I, Caitlin has gone to a different level. We're talking about doing it all. We're talking about having 20 something points. We're talking about having 10 or more assists. We're talking about having 10 or more rebounds. We're talking about being active. We're talking about being a straight up hooper. And that's, that's a topic that's been widely debated, just like MVP is. Who's a hooper? What's a hooper? Well, I mean, everybody's had that guy on their team that just scores all day. I've been a part of them. I'm like, dang, I can score too. I've just been playing defense down there, but now I got a wide. Oh, he's going to shoot. Okay. I got that. I get that. There, there are scorers. There are people that do everything all around. That That's the thing. I get it. I'm here for it. But right now, Caitlin is being more of the hooper, and not only is she being more of the hooper, yes, like this is this is 100% what it is to be an MVP. Because of my presence, this team went from getting the – First overall pick because we're not that good. Our record tells us this. And now you're in the playoffs. I can't wait to see what she does in the playoffs. And when I say she, I mean all of the Indiana fever. I can't wait to see what the team does because we got an old girl. Shorty, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I forgot your name. I'm sorry. McLean did something. I'm sorry. I apologize. She's got a streak of 20 or more points per game. The backcourt is looking crazy right now for Indiana fever. Like they're, that's a That's a dangerous duo. I'm here for it. I love it. I might be a little biased because, you know, I'm a little Indiana myself. Caitlin Clark is doing something special. Ain't nobody. I'm not pandering to nobody. I'm not pandering to. No, 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 no. I'm just calling like I see it, man. You know, I, 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 honestly, I wish I lived in Idaho, right? Uh, what's something else? I wish I lived in. I don't know, North Carolina or something. I don't know. I wish I just lived something away from where those things don't typically like they don't really affect me. So with that being said. I, don't know, I apologize. I'm uh, being interrupted right now. Uh, so with that being said. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, that's what it is, if it ain't nothing else. All right. So let's get into it. Let's just, let's just keep it going because Caitlin Clark seems to be the most valuable player to me. That's all I'm saying. Thanks for watching. Make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms. Don't forget, every Thursday, the full podcast is on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Mama, I'm on Spotify. Overall 99 ENT bringing you videos from Friday all the way to Friday. So be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate it. Again, thank you so much. I holla.